Hey, what's up? How you doing? Just wanted to give you all a little disclaimer. This was made before the copyright strike from Vlogging Through History's YouTube channel was removed. So it's a little bit dated, but that shouldn't take away from anything else in the video. That's it. Thank you. Look, it's a soapbox. I ain't gonna stand on it though. I don't think it's that structurally sound, but hey, I'll get the job done for now. That works. As I write this script, I'm traveling back from a road trip to Tennessee. And altogether, I'm looking at about a five hour drive as a passenger. So I have a lot of time to refine this and get it all written out to record when I get back home. I tell you all this to convey that I did not write this in haste and that when I say I'm a fan of CGP Grey, you'll believe me. Ironically enough, I came across him with his CGP Grey was wrong video, which was on trending for a couple of days. The sheer sincerity conveyed in that video interested me enough to check out his other videos. And that led to me discovering some of my all-time favorite videos on this website. And this is more of a side note than anything else, but Gray has also been a big influence on how I make my own videos as a hobby. And as of right now, is a pretty big driving force for me to complete two different separate projects that I've been this close to scrapping on like three different occasions. But hey, this video isn't about me. Let's get down to the bee's knees. I think that's how you say that phrase. I don't know. All right. So on April 6th, Gray locks his YouTube comment section on claims of spam bots. And in order to comment, you're going to have to subscribe to his Patreon. He also redirects everyone who is not willing to pay over to his Reddit page. April 10th, Gray copyright strikes two of vlogging through history's reaction videos of his content. This pretty much ends up kicking a hornet's nest and brings public attention and call outs by other YouTubers. And finally, April 22nd, Gray removed his older videos such as the older Brexit video as well as some extras like his multi-hour driving videos and relegated them to being behind his Patreon as a subscriber bonus. I'm gonna do my best to keep my info concise and go without rambling, but you need to bear with me here. There's a lot to unpack. But Gray, as a student, I do appreciate the sentiment of referring people over to your Reddit page for further discussion as a free alternative to the YouTube page. Sure, it might be a little bit controversial, but if you and your team truly believe that is the best option for the channel, so be it. I can live with that. However, that sentiment is diluted when you only refer to people to go to your Patreon in the video's description. And on a later date, scrub your about page to only leave your Patreon, making so these free viewers now have to go out of their way to search for the official Reddit page. And I apologize in advance for going a little bit too in-depth and probably picking some meanings out of different things. But with the reputation of modern day Reddit that you acknowledge has said reputation, there's going to be an obstacle for those students that you mentioned in this video. Now, let's talk about vlogging through history. This was a peculiar situation that coincided with the restriction of comments that, from a viewer's perspective, did not look very good. Now, I'm not going to pretend as if I know you or your team's stance on copyright law, and I sure as hell ain't taking your word off a video from a decade ago, not even speaking of the enforcement of copyright. I also ain't gonna judge it morally because I've seen compelling arguments from sides both regarding their situation. However, what I do have a problem with is you ceasing communication after seeing those copyright strikes and getting that initial pushback. It's a bad look for having one side explain everything towards that situation and the other side not saying a single word about it. And then two weeks later on the 22nd, spring cleaning is an interesting way of putting it, my friend. Now here's the fun stuff. This much just was my breaking point. I was able to slide the pass towards everything else here, even the two copyright strikes, which I know might be pushing a little bit. But it was this message right here that threw me into writing this in my notepad files on my phone. So let's get cracking. Gray, you addressed your Patreon audience first. And while although this will heavily affect how your Patreon audiences watches these videos in particular, is not about your Patreon audience. It's about the audience not subscribed to the Patreon. And you don't mention them once in either your Twitter post or your YouTube community page. The worst thing about this is that you do not make your perspective clear of why you chose to do this. The best description you provide here is out of place videos. What makes these videos out of place? You can kind of inference the reason why these might have been restricted. They are mostly outdated videos, but still, that is not communicated to at least us on the outside. And you gotta remember, this isn't about YouTube memberships and Patreon anymore. When you take away these videos that were once public, it's affecting everyone that's part of your YouTube audience. And I haven't even really gotten to my opinion that this is also really, really dumb. After the T-Core video, alongside re-uploading the video corrected, you also made a director's commentary public, and you kind of marked it as a historical curiosity. Why aren't these Brexit videos and the Macaw videos put in that same category? Is it just because they're outdated? Them being outdated might be their significance, who knows? It's just confusing, because if you don't want them to be spread or anything, just make them unlisted, or better yet, just delete the videos entirely. Why would you bother putting them behind the paywall, like that's something special? 
transparency. That's really what I'm looking for in all of this. I don't feel 100% in the way of telling someone how to run their business or how to facilitate the content that they make. I think the reason why I felt all right with you restricting YouTube comments is because you gave a reason. You gave us something to hook onto and gave us a method to the madness for us to kind of follow. This post and the whole mini saga of the copyright strikes, I worry would be detrimental to how you would proceed publicly. This is just an observation on my part and I'm not saying this is something you need to be doing, but no communication is sometimes worse than bad communication on the internet from the viewer's perspective. But just keep that in mind with how you might go about things later on, in case anything like this happens again. I'm gonna stand up now, my legs are killing me. But Gray, outside of this one little saga, you've been a point of brilliance on this website. And I hope this new era of Gray that seems to be emerging will continue the path of the excellence that you've been doing for nearly a decade plus. I'll see you on the other side.